Okay, so this is the second part of the video where I try to intuitively explain concepts and in this video I'm going to explain the parallel axis theorem as intuitively as I can. So first we will be starting with the mathematical proof of parallel axis theorem and the second part I'm going to intuitively explain to you how it works. So watch through it. If you like it, please share it with your friends if you think it's going to benefit them. And yeah, continue with the, with the uh, rest part of the video. Now we are coming to another theorem which is called as the parallel axis theorem. And we'll try to again develop a sense of intuition for it. Like... We know the formulae, but we'll again derive it. We'll try to derive it. And then we will try to get it in our intuition. Okay. So now we need to assume a condition where we have this uh, rod over here. And we are going to take... Yeah, this rod of length 2a is there with us. And its center is at a distance of... B. Why did I take the uh, length of the rod as 2a? Just to aid me in my calculation. You will see that very soon. Okay. So the center center of mass of this rod is at a distance of B from the axis of rotation. It's somewhat like, let me tell you how it's like. Assume that this is a rod, okay? And this is the axis of rotation. So the rotation is going to happen like this. Okay. So this is going to be the uh, kind of rotation. So this length is 2a and the distance between this and this end sorry the distance from here the center of mass and this rod is b right the length of the rod is 2a so we are cal calculating in this fashion okay so now we have to find the inertia of this body over this rod uh, over this axis of rotation so how do you proceed with this kind of a scenario i am just uh, taking this like you can apply this ma method for any general object okay any general object you take a particular dm. What is dm? A very small mass which you can integrate. Why? Because when you are finding inertia, inertia is actually integration of small masses. Why? Because inertia is actually addition, right? You know that. So remember what we did over here. We actually added the masses, right? Here we added the masses and we told that uh, this has more inertia than this. Similarly here also what we are doing is that we are actually adding the masses, we are adding the inertia, right? In mass you add mass, in rotational motion you add inertia. So how, what is the small inertia? Small inertia is inertia of this small masses, dm r square. What is this dm? Now you have to select a suitable dm. Selecting the suitable dm in this case is very easy. We just go a distance x and you take a very thin slice right and you call it dx now this mass wait now this mass which you get over here is your dm you need to work with this now you have to integrate with this so the obvious reason is how do you integrate this dm so in most logical fashion you have to find out what dm actually is what dm stands for how much the value of dm is? So remember one thing that uh, the total mass of this rod is capital M. I just forgot to give that. So if the total mass of this rod is capital M, now you just apply unitary method. For length 2a, you can have mass as capital M. For unit length, you can ma have mass as M by 2a. For dx distance, your mass will be dm into dx by 2a. And what is the mass of dx distance of length? Exactly, that's dm. Right? So we substitute this value of dm over here. Why? You will get to understand that. See, because by integrating dm, you have no idea what it's gonna be like. Like you cannot integrate dm. But if you bring dx, you have that limits which you can put. So you can just find out the values. Right, you can you cannot integrate dm to have a good idea of what's going to happen. You can integrate dx to find the values. Why you 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 will understand very soon. Okay, so you just put in the value of dx and you find that m dx by 2a. Wait, it's not okay. Now you need to uh, find the value of r square. What is the value of r? The value of r is that dm, the distance that dm is from the axis of rotation. So how much distance is the uh, is it away from the axis of rotation? X. You see, this dm is away x distance from the axis of rotation. So you put in x square over here, right? R square, x square. Also, another thing, when you are integrating something, try bringing all the things of the same variable in the like 
if dx is the differentiation of x all the terms which you have over there should be in terms of x like if it was in terms of t in terms of time you will have to bring it in the form of x otherwise you cannot integrate that okay so this is a, a common general rule which you need to follow okay so next next thing which you do m by 2a is constant right so you send them out of the integration sign some somewhat how you take common in case of addition you take common in case of integration so here we are ending with m by 2a x square dot dx well let me just uh, make this area a bit better this area is really congested yeah now it's uh, better let me just yeah okay so now what we what you do you need to first understand where this x is uh, where where i'm going to integrate from what what is my initial limit and what is my final limit where do i start from and where do i end so if you look at this diagram where is the mass m along like along what distance can you integrate this thing is the mass here wait this this is not a question mark sign is the mass here the mass is not here so you're not going to integrate it here is the mass here the mass is not here so you're not going to integrate over here is the mass here is the mass here of course it is so you're going to integrate from this end to this end right so what is the distance of this end you'll have to find it out so you draw this line you know that this distance is b what is this distance it is a why because the entire length of this dot is 2a so half of its length would be a so what is this distance b minus a right and where it is ending it is ending over here so you take this line you extrapolate it you need to find this length right so what is this length this length is wait where is it? uh this length is b minus a right this length is b minus a we just found uh, we just found it out and this total length is 2a so this length is b plus a now we need to put the limits this is the initial limit this is the starting limit and this b plus a is the final limit where it's ending that's how integration works along the length where the mass is present where you can integrate there only you integrate no so you're starting as with the starting with b minus a and you're ending with b plus a right okay so now you have uh, if you have some uh, knowledge of integration then you also know how to integrate x to the power n dot dx first i'll write the common part uh sorry not this part i am integrating so i'll not use this rather i'll use this so what's going to be is going to be x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 right the general formula of integrating x to the power n dot dx is x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 right but what is n over here n is 2 n is 2 right so what is going to end in okay let me just put in the limits you shouldn't for, uh, forget the limits at all cost okay just remember remember the limits to uh, li remember to put the limits so you get x square by 3 upper limit b plus uh, a lower limit is b minus a why was this, why was i saying starting limit and ending limits are upper limit and lower limit yeah i just forgot all the terms you know it's, it's been a long time since i did physics last okay so you now put in the values how do you do that you put in the upper limit in in, uh, in place of x first and then subtract it by putting the lower limit in place of x i'm showing you how you put in the big bracket now in in place of x you put in b plus a so x cube by 3 it was now it would be b plus a cube by 3 you see instead of x you put b plus a now you subtract by placing lower limit in place of x how do you do that instead of x you put in b minus a the lower limit you put in the lower limit over here and you subtract what the result is going to be is going to be the answer right so the 3 comes out uh, what's going to remain uh, 3 mm, b square a plus wait it's going to be twice right it's going to be twice 3 b square a plus a, a cube 
Yeah, it's gonna be a cube. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a cube. Yeah. Yeah, you just calculate it. I just calculate it mentally. So you you do that. It's it's gonna be the same thing. Okay. So basically, what you get over here is two two gets cancelled. Okay. So what you get m b square plus m a square by three. Now, if you see something, m b square should seem a bit familiar. What is m b square? If if you took this scenario if you took this scenario of a of this scenario where the center of mass is at a distance b and if you compressed it to a scenario where this is just a thing of just a tiny dot of ma uh, capital mass m and is at a distance b then what would be its inertia mb square right what do you have over 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 here mb square so you basically compress the entire thing in, into its center of mass the distance of its center of mass would become the r over here and what is m a square by 3 you have to uh, manipulate it a bit m uh, you multiply 4 above and below okay 4 is 4 a square what why is why is what is doing outside by 12 You get m two a whole square by twelve. Now, if you have opened your books, then you will probably know that m l square by twelve is the inertia of rotating a rod about its axis. Now, let me bring again this thing. So, when you are doing something like this, the formula is first consider this as a point. First, consider this as a point. Now the inner the now the in, assume that this point has the entire mass as this thing. Okay, the inertia which this thing will have from here is that m b square m l square which we had, and add it with the inertia across this axis, the axis across its center of mass. Now this is what parallel axis theorem is. Now you have to understand that intuitively. Why? Just for fun. So if you want to intuitively understand this, think it like this. that when you are actually rotating it like this yeah it's rotating but you can actually divide its uh, rotational motion into two parts one it's stationary and it's going like this in which case this actually acts like a point and the inertia would be mb square right assume that it's not rotating it's going like this its inertia is going to be mb square but if it but along with the it's not rotating like this it's going like this what it means is that for every rotation it has rotated once like this so are you understanding something it's it's doing two motions at the same time it's going like this and it's also going like this so for going like this the inertia is mb square for going like this the inertia is ml square by 12 What you found over here is just the same thing. M B square for going like this, and M A square by three for going like this, because for every rotation which you did like this, what you actually did was this plus this. Actually, I did the wrong way. This, this plus this. So you actually added the inertia, and that's the intuitive sense of it. you didn't even need to calculate that if you had that sense of intuition you could have just got it down in the first place you did not need to derive it and that's the fun of physics and i think i have given you enough in intuition in the video maybe i'll uh, come out with other videos where i'll just tell you how to like intuitively solve some sums and how to avoid too much of calculation rotational motion because there are some sums which you will see that where you actually do a lot of calculation which does not need to be done if you just are like if you can spot some things very easily you can maybe get it done in one step or two step so maybe i'll come out with that video and for now thanks for watching and as always keep commenting